Good evening. Tonight, I would like to share with you part six of this LCMS Unknown Identifications Using MSMS Libraries series that I have been presenting over the last week or so. The part, part six is on the MS interpreter correlation of sub substructure to MSMS MS ions. So if you have an ion in a spectrum, and, a, and an accurate mass spectrum, or even a nominal mass spectrum, the software will attempt to tell you the possibilities for the substructure that correlate with that ion. So it's very powerful for finding model compounds, for confirming unknowns, just understanding fragmentation of any spectrum that's with its associated structure that's in the database. So it has many different uses. With every one of these presentations, I've had a handout, a very detailed handout with the settings and the screenshots and more information that I'll actually share with you in the video. So if you want to learn more, go to the detailed handout and I have an index, a table of context for each one, cable of contents for each one of them that shows the associated number of slide number and the, and the topic. So it's easier to step through when you know what you're looking for. But some of them can be fairly long. And this is the another part in the series, and you can see the other ones that we've already presented, but all of them deal with the LCMS unknown identifications using MSMS libraries and the skill one needs to do that. I'd already presented and prepared a session on EI GCMS unknown identifications using the NIST software and their associated libraries, but LCMS identifications are probably less used by most people with using with the NIST software, but I think the NIST software and the associated commercial databases that they sell are very high quality and that you could have your own user libraries and there are other crowdsourced databases. It'd be very handy for, very useful for identifying unknowns. And uh, matter of fact, we used it for many years at Eastman to identify unknowns routinely using the NIST software. So I was hoping I could share this information with others that you might use it in your work. Well, the first thing one needs to do is draw a structure because we have to correlate it with our spectrum if it doesn't already have a, a structure with it. So I've drawn two structures here. I need to select the one of twos that I want. I circle it and then right click and, well, let's not do that that way in this one, this program. You have to choose it and then you say edit, copy. And when you copy it, it puts it into the Windows clipboard and enables one to put it into the NIST software into the search software. So we'll go and open up the search software. Here we have our spectrum here at the top. We have our accurate mass spectrum. And what we need to do is correlate our structure with it. So you go down to do that, you need to go to the librarian tab. The librarian tab lets you correlate these two together or connect them together. And we go and select the one we want. Here's our spectrum. And we go to this little thing that says edit. If you hover it over it for a second, you'll see it says edit spectrum. So edit it. And now you say from clipboard and it brings in the structure that we circled in the ChemSketch drawing program and puts it into our spectrum window here. Uh, the other thing you need to do now is say from structure and it calculates the molecular weight and the molecular formula from the structure. At this point, if you wanted to add it to your library, you would just put in some synonyms, names, put in a proper name I put in some comments about where it came from, where the origin of it was, laboratory notebook number, et cetera, and say, add to library. And we'll talk about that in another session in more detail. But in this case, when, you, when we just want to use MS interpreter, all you have to do is say, add to list. It says, you have to have a name. So we'll put in uh, demo and say, add to list. All right, now if you go, back to the spec list window and go to the one that we call demo. Now you can see that you have a correlated structure with the mass spectrum. Now to send it to the MS interpreter program, it's an outside program that's accessed by the NIST search program. You can do it several different ways. You can right click and say send to MS interpreter, or you can just go to your keyboard and push F9 on the keyboard, F9. Here I'll just do send to. MS interpreter. It'll bring the MS interpreter into focus and you'll see that we now have our structure and the spectrum. What we need to do is you see these little tick marks on the top. You need to left mouse click on that and select what you want to see. So we, we adjusted our 
resolution to pick up that one ion. And now if you look up into the top window, you can see that this is the what's in red is what it thinks the substructure is. And any ion that's in black below here or yellow or red, it has a guess about what it should be. And so you can see that it thinks it's this substructure here, which makes a lot of sense, uh, sense fragmenting next to the nitrogen. And if you look over here, it'll tell you something about how it lost, the type of dissociation loss, the rate, relative rate, uh, other things. But if you look over here on the formula calculator, you can turn this on by clicking the little icon that looks like CH question mark. Since this is accurate mass, it tells you that it's C3H8N and it has a 58.06513, an error of 0 0.4 parts per million with respect to that formula. You can go up here to parts per million and change it to millidaltons if you like. Uh, I like parts per million, so I'm going to leave the display in parts per million. So you'll notice that this is, uh, we'll go down and click on the 58 again, just to get it highlighted again. You'll notice this is a one of four. So it knows four different things of what it might be. So if you just go get on the hash mark, the little tick mark, and you click it left mouse button and again, you'll see it goes to two or four, three or four, and four or four. It shows you all the different possibilities. So you can go to the next ion and do the same thing. And here there's only one possible structure and it's a good fit, 0 0.3 parts per million makes sense for this nitrogen type fragment. But if you wanted to go through the whole spectrum, let's go back and get on the 58 ion. So I click on the 58 ion and then you can use your left and mouse right buttons on your keyboard, on your keyboard, not on your mouse, but on your keyboard. And I'm going to do the right one now and it'll go two of four. If you watch this top display up at the top, it's on two of four now, three of four, four of four. And then when the next one, when it's through showing you all of those, it jumps over to the 86 to show you it. Hit the right arrow again. It jumps way over to the 248 ion. Uh, that's a little more unusual. It's a three bond break. Uh, cleavage, so it's uh, you can't really calculate the rate, but it thinks it knows what it is, and it says it's got an error at about 0 0.4 parts per million, but it's in yellow just because it's a little bit more complex and it's not calculated by the standard approach that it used for the other ions, and you can just keep stepping through them, and there was two structures for that. There's actually three structures, weren't there? Three structures, three of three, and then it jumps over to the next ion, and you can just keep stepping through the whole spectrum till you get to the molecular ion. Uh, which is absent in this spectrum. It gets about as close as it gets as the 308. But it's very easy to use. It's nothing much, uh, not much of a problem for using that. So the, the other thing that you need to make sure that we really didn't do when we started, because I already had this set up, is to right click on the gray window and say options. And you can see there's uh, lots of different things you can select and you just have to play with them. Show low confidence reactions, show unexplained common losses, I like to click show mouse position and put it on the cursor so that when you're on something, it tells you where you're at. The other thing is you need to go to the options here and select the type of ions that you want. You wanna protonate it when you import it if you're doing M plus H, deprotonated would be M minus H. And then you'd also have ionized if it was EI type spectrum. So we got all the settings set up and those are in the handout if you want to look them up and make sure you've got them right when you use MS Interpreter. So we've pretty much stepped through everything. The other thing you can do if you want to is you can select the ions just by lassoing it. If you wanted to see what this ion is and not use the calculator to let it do it for you, just take your left mouse button and circle it. Left mouse button and circle it. It'll show you the same ions. It'll show this is one of the ions we saw and it's got an error of uh, 26 parts per million. It doesn't seem to be always calculating that correctly there compared to what it does here. Uh, so I've noticed it didn't always hit the exact mass to charge there when you circle it. But you can do very complex things that way. If you wanted to kind of do a like a complex search when you did this and this, this is a little bit ridiculous. So I'm just trying to make a point. You can circle anything you want and automatically calculate what it would be. So it just kind of gives you an idea uh, if you have an idea of what it might be better than the program would. But the program does a pretty good job. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, uh, instead of stepping through them, I'll just check the main ones by circling them just to see if they make sense to me from known fragmentation mechanisms, especially if I'm 
very uh, knowledgeable in the particular class I'm looking at. So that's pretty much it. There's one other thing. Let's go back to this program, see if I have another blank here. Uh, I have a blank here, and I'm going to send that to MS Interpreter. And I think you can paste the structure in. So that's what I did. I brought in these, these MS Interpreter spectrum without a structure, but I already had that structure in my clipboard. And all I did was say, edit, paste, and it pasted it in. I, I don't do that very often for the main reason is I really like to keep those in my spec list for a while while I'm working on a project. And when I exit MS Interpreter, it doesn't keep the structure with the spectrum when you do it this way. So I, I really prefer using the librarian tab to add things. So that's, uh, that's really pretty much all there is to using MS Interpreter. It's an easy program to use, but that's oh so powerful for looking at uh, correlating things to knowns and unknowns alike. Uh, the other thing one can do, you can go to any spectrum in the library. So let's just pick one further down. Let's go over to names and pick something from the Mono database and send that. All you have to do is right click on any spectrum that has a structure with it in the library and say send to MS Interpreter. And you can go over and learn how things fragment. Uh, the, the MS Interpreter didn't really know a whole lot about this one. It's a very complex ring structure and it probably didn't have a lot in its rules. It knew what some of the high ions were, but it, lose it loses it toward the bottom. But in general, remember anything that has a spectrum and a structure within the, the program, right click, send to MS Interpreter, and it'll tell you something about the fragmentation. So I hope you find this interesting, and I hope you'll join us for the other sessions in the series. Thank you so much.